Here we go. Question 10. A container in the shape of an inverted cone of radius 3 meters and vertical height 4.5 meters is initially filled with liquid fertilizer. Think, think ice cream, but in fertilizer form. This fertilizer is released through a hole in the bottom of the container at a rate of 0 0.01 meters cubed per second. At time t seconds, the fertilizer remaining in the container forms an inverted cone of height 8 meters. There we go. The volume of a cone is that. Show that this equation is true. All right. The problem, the problem that lots of people had with this was that they were just overwhelmed by variables. There's so much going on, isn't there? So we've got this, which, oh, that is very thick. We've got this cone, there it is, um, that the fertilizer is dripping out of a hole at the bottom of. And we're told that, well, we're, this, is, this is radius, uh, the full cone, this is three meters, isn't it? And this length here, it's 4.5 meters. That's the information that we're given. And then the fertilizer is leaking out, so at some point it reaches that, that point there, and we're saying that that height, the height at any time, is h, and the radius at any time is r. Okay? Um, actually, we need, to, we need to kind of link some of these things together. We're also given in the question that. Well, what is this? The fertilizer is released at this rate. This is <coughs> meters cubed per second. So that is dv by dt, isn't it? And it's going down at that rate, and that's minus 0.01. Okay? And I think that's, that's just kind of taking down the information from the question, um, thinking where we go with it. We've got to end up with dh by dt. We're given that v is one-third pi r squared h. Now I think we all know that actually if we want to get to dh by dt, we've got dv by dt, we want to connect these things together using the, the um, chain rule, don't we? And what are the things that we're connecting together? Well we've got, we've got v and t and h involved. So the way that they would connect together is um, dv by dt is dv by dh times dh by dt. That's our, that's our chain rule. We've not really done anything particularly revolutionary so far with this. That's, that's where we're starting from. So now we come up against our first problem, and that is, here we've got v in terms of r and h, and we need to get dv by dh from it. So we have to find some way of connecting r and h together, don't we? And what we know is that because this is a cone, the ratio of R and H is always going to be the same, all the way down the cone, because it's the same cone, because the ratio is all about, well, if we think about it, actually, if you want to, to go into detail with it, think about that angle there. Okay, you imagine, you see that angle there? Now, now that angle there, which is, if I chop the cone in half, it's the angle made between the vertical line at the middle and the radius at any point. That angle there, tan theta, I didn't, I didn't involve tan theta when I did this, but it's a nice way of thinking about it. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent, because that's a right angle triangle in there, isn't it? Can we see the right angle triangle? So tan theta is R of H. But if we look at the whole cone as it originally started out when it was full, opposite over adjacent is 3 over 4.5. So we have that relationship. Now given that relationship, we can say that R is equal to 3H over 4.5. Can we see that? Another way of writing that is that R equals 2 thirds of H. That's the important thing for us to get. And that will always be true in this cone. As the, as the level of fertilizer goes down, that ratio is maintained all the way down right to the bottom. So it's always true that R equals 2 thirds of H, which means that when we come to do this, V is 1 third of pi times R 
Actually, now we've got V in terms of H. We've got V is, well, actually, this is, what is it, um, 4, and this would be over 27, pi H cubed, because that's 2 thirds squared is 4 ninths times the third that we have there, because it's that. So when we differentiate this to find V by the H, we get... 4 ninths of pi h squared. That's um, multiplied by the 3, so it's 12 27 which comes out to 4 ninths. So. Right. We're there now with our chain rule thing. dv by dt, the question told us, was minus 0. Point something. Minus 0.01. is dv by dh, 4 ninths pi h squared, times dh by dt. And the question wanted us to write that in a particular format, it wanted h squared dh by dt, that's the thing that we ended up with. So we've got h squared dh by dt there, we're going to take this bit over to the other side. This is a hundredth, so if we times it by 9 and divide it by 4, it becomes minus 9 over 400, and we're going to divide by the pi as well. Pi is h squared dh by dt, and is that what they wanted? Yeah, it is minus 9 over 400 pi is h squared dh by dt. So we did it that way. Okay, it was all about yeah. spotting that you had too many variables if you had r and h involved and finding some way to link R and H together. And that's why they've chosen a code, because they have this linear relationship between them as you move, as the liquid moves down the code. So you could easily eliminate one of them. Unfortunately, <coughs> having got that far, the question is going to say, for the next four marks, express H in terms of T, which is basically saying, take the differential equation that you've got here and solve it. So even if you've messed up part one completely, you can come into the question and redeem those, redeem the rest of the question by picking up at this point. And we've got to be aware of that. We've got to look out for those opportunities. Uh, they gave you what to start with. So we go from this. Integrate both sides. So we're going to integrate both sides with respect to t, because t is on the bottom there. We get the integral of h squared dh is the integral of minus 9 over 400 pi with respect to t. And it's a nice straightforward integration. h squared would go to h cubed over 3. This would go to minus 9t over 400 pi. And we remember we must have the constant of integration in there as well, so we must put plus c at the end of it. And that's not done because the question said solve your equation to find h in terms of t. So at this point, before I do anything else, I want to work out what c is. Oh, well, hang on. When this all started, when time was zero, the height was, it was full, full to the brim in the cone, wasn't it? And we are told that was four and a half. So h is equal to 4.5. That's the initial moment. So we sub that in. And that gives us 4.5 cubed over 3. I can't remember what that was. 4.5 cubed over 3 is 2.3 over 8. Is 0 plus C. So C is 2.4.3 over 8. So I've now got my equation looking like h cubed over 3 is... Minus 9t of 400 pi plus 243 over 8. And the question says, remember, find an expression, express h in terms of t. So I've got to get h on its own. Well, I'm going to multiply by 3 and then square root onto That's the way to go with this. So h, not square root, cube root. h is... Um, let's do it. Let's do it that way around. So two fourths of that times three is seventy-nine over 
8 minus 27t of 400 pi. I'll multiply 3 by 3. And then cube root it. H is the cube root of 79 over 8 minus 27t of 400 pi. And, you know, when we talked about this earlier, uh, earlier in this paper, we had a big thing where we, we took a pause and we talked about the idea of our brackets and how we deal with brackets. And so we've got to be absolutely certain here that we're remembering that. And then when we cube root all of that, it's not cube rooting that one, taking away the cube root of that one. It doesn't mean that, does it? We can't split it up. It's the cube root of the whole thing. So we leave it like that. There's our answer. Okay, um, which leads us on to the final part question, which said, and it's a bit of a cheeky one at the end of this, it said, um, find the time it takes to empty the container, giving your answer to the nearest minutes. Well, if the container is empty, this is what they expected you to do. If the container is empty, that's the time when H equals zero. So we're looking when h equals 0, what happens to this? We've got 0 is the cube root of 729 over 8 minus 27t over 400 pi. That cube root there is, is pretty irrelevant at this point. That just means that t is 729 over 8 times 400 pi over 27. Have I done that too fast? Is that all right? It's just when this equals 0, Take that over to the other side, and then multiply by 400 pi and divide by 27. And this gives us some number that just didn't feel right. 729 over 8 times 400 pi over 27. It gives us, well, it gives us 1350 pi, or 4241.15. And then it goes on a bit. But hang on. That's that's time. The question said, giving your answer to the nearest minute. What were we measuring time in way up here? We had we talked about per second. So that's the number of seconds. So to turn it into minutes, we divide it by 60. And we come to 70.68 minutes, or 69 minutes. So 71 minutes, the nearest minute. There we go. One other thing from this, and, uh, and when, I, when I worked through this paper last summer, this is how I did this last question. But it was John who actually noticed something else about this. The fertilizer is flying out at a constant rate, 0 0.01 meters cubed per second. Because it's flying out at a constant rate, all we need to know is what is the volume of this to start with? <laughs> How long does that disappear at that rate? So actually, you could have bypassed all of parts one and two, ignored it completely. You could have said this cone, which is 3 and 4.5. So the volume is 1 third pi r squared h. So the volume is 1 third times pi times 9 times 4.5 is 27 over 2 pi. How many 0.01s goes into that? 27 over 2 pi divided by 0.01 <coughs> it gives us an answer of uh, 42,000, uh, 4,241.15 seconds, which we're going to divide by 60 and come out with our answer of 71 minutes. So actually, if you'd spotted it, part three was just a fairly trivial, simple question at the end of it. Um, but that's quite tough to put, you know, 
after dragging yourself through an hour and a half of call for and you're not going to spot something like that probably anyway. so your brain is slightly frazzled there we go so that's that and that's maths well, well done